We start our team coverage with WATE 6 on your side anchor Kristen Farley live in Pigeon Forge where Kristen has been monitoring the crash site as crews investigate. Kristen, you were there for the debriefing where we learned a bit more today from the NTSB. Yes, Lori, we did, but the NTSB stressing they do not want to speculate at this point about what caused this helicopter to go down on the ridge behind me here. I want to step out of the shot for a minute where you can see this is still a very active scene just beyond the police tape there. You can see several local agencies as well as the FAA and the NTSB still taking a look at that crash site. Now, just about an hour ago, we learned a little bit more. Here's some of the new information we got. First of all, we do know that this Bell 206 helicopter was manufactured back in 1977, but right now they are still looking at the maintenance records as well as trying to get a better idea of flight hours on this particular helicopter. They also, again, as you heard Bo say moments ago, confirming this was a Smoky Mountain helicopter flight. It started actually at a helipad uh, off of Highway 66. Now, to give you some perspective, that is about four miles behind where we are standing right now. Now, this flight was apparently supposed to take about 12 minutes. They will not tell us exactly how long this chopper was in the air before it went down, but earlier today we heard investigators describe the crash scene. There is evidence that the, that the helicopter contacted uh, near the top of the, uh, the ridgeline, and uh, there's a piece of uh, small piece of structure uh, near the top of the ridge. There's also parts of the helicopter's uh, skids, which are the, uh, the, the landing uh, gear of the, of the helicopter that are, uh, that are on top of the, uh, not on top, but uh, along, the, along the ridge line there. And uh, as far as the tail rotor, uh, the rain rotor blades, and uh, all major components, uh, we believe we have identified, but we're still taking an inventory, but we believe the entire helicopter is at the accident set. And we do want to let you know we are just getting a camera back from that crash site. Investigators letting one camera go up there moments ago. So we do expect to be able to bring you pictures from the actual crash scene up there on that ridge line in just a few moments here on WATE. In the meantime, we do want to continue to kind of set the stage here and give you an idea of exactly where we are. We want to go ahead and pan over to let you know exactly how close we are to a residential area here. You've been looking at a field mostly behind me here in this ridge line, but take Take a look. You can see just beyond that tree line is the Little Pigeon River, and there are houses right over there. The people living in those homes, some of the very first people to hear that loud crash, to alert authorities yesterday, and some of them even taking some valiant efforts to try to help those on board this helicopter. Again, all five people died. Now, WATE 6 on your side reporter Laura Holm has been talking to those witnesses all day long. She joins us now, and I can imagine, Laura, some uh, pretty emotional stories stories you heard today. Oh, Kristen, you are so right. Everyone who was living back there and was there yesterday, they describe what happened as devastating, traumatic, and simply horrific. Um, I did speak to a few people who were some of the first to run across the river and offer first aid to everyone that was in that helicopter. Understandably, they are way too shaken to go on camera, and they said that they wanted to spare the families and the loved ones. Uh, who are involved in this helicopter crash from hearing all of the traumatic details. Our live team coverage starts tonight with WATE 6 on your side anchor Kristen Farley joining us from near the crash site. Now, Kristen, what have you learned to this point? Well, Lori and Stephanie, in the last 45 minutes or so, the number of crews here investigating has greatly diminished, as you can see, just beyond the crime tape there. We have learned, though, someone from the Pigeon Forge Police Department will be remaining here on scene 24 hours a day until this investigation is wrapped up to help secure this scene. Now, sometime overnight and early this morning, the lead investigator from the NTSB arriving on this scene, and around 3 o'clock this afternoon, we had an opportunity to hear from him as he began to paint a picture of what happened yesterday and what will happen as this investigation moves forward. Nearly 24 hours after the sightseeing helicopter went down, we are getting our first real look at the crash scene and getting some answers from the NTSB. Our primary goal right now is to document the helicopter at the accident site to the point where we could move it so it could be documented further uh, 
away from the site. Because of the large fire after impact, identifying and removing the wreckage is a difficult task, one that could take several more days. The lead investigator on the scene describing what is left as extremely fragmented. You know, fire destroys and it, and it consumes, so that's going to limit what uh, some of the components. It's going to destroy components. It's going to uh, it's going to conceal and in some cases destroy evidence. We learned this chopper was manufactured in 1977 and did not have a black box on board. Now they're just hoping that witness accounts, any radio communications, weather conditions and other evidence will help them piece together what went wrong yesterday afternoon. We'll see if we need to be out the following day before we could actually authorize uh, authorize uh, removal of it. Now this crash obviously sparking people not just here in East Tennessee, but really all around the country and the world to send their thoughts and prayers to the victims from this crash. It's also sparking a lot of questions about the safety of the helicopter industry, in particular the sightseeing tourism industry. WATE six on your side reporter Whitney Good spent the day getting us some answers. Whitney.